Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so yeah, my name's Noah, and I'm here uh, from Heroku. And today I'd like to talk about a concept uh, that's important to me on the execution team at uh, Heroku, but uh, hopefully important to all of us uh, as users of, of cloud platforms. Uh, it's a concept called user space. Uh, so uh, you may or may not be familiar with Heroku, but uh, our mission is to make simple application delivery. So here, you know, just a very, you know, getting started on Heroku, you can take a file, take your Ruby code, take your Node code or Python, uh, however your API is built, and push it to Heroku, and we will run it. And you know, hopefully this is one of the promises of the cloud that, uh, and promises of Heroku that uh, this is easier than it's ever been before. Uh, and so, but the, it begs a question, like, how is this actually running? And there's an increasingly like, hand-wavy answer, which is just, this is the cloud. It's running in the cloud. Uh, all right, next, next, uh, next subject. But uh, here we can uh, actually understand what's going on and, and kind of dig deeper at this. And uh, so the way this is running uh, on our platform, but in platforms in general, and, and really just computing in general, uh, is one concept that uh, I really like uh, with kernels and user spaces. So this, uh, it's a metaphor that was established you know, probably in the 80s on the Linux kernel hackers mailing list of, you know, we're developing the kernel, what goes in there, and what do you do outside of the kernel in the user space or user land? And uh, a kernel is a system that has total control of what's going on. The, it's, it's really the lower level stuff and, and the nitty gritty. And uh, so the kernel is in a position to impose constraints, but expose something to the user then to consume. So a space for them to play. So there's you know, a metaphor here of a sandbox. It's, there's somebody is building, you know, parents go build a sandbox and, and the kids can go play with it, but you can't leave that sandbox. These are the only tools you have to use. Uh, so let's, let's dig deeper and look at some of the, some of the uh, interactions at play here for your application. So we have a simple Sinatra request. You know, we'll receive your request. And so one of the first spaces this is running in is your language virtual machine. So in this case, it's the MRI Ruby virtual machine. And um, this, uh, you know, very complicated subject on its own. And we could dig into any single one of these and, and look at, you know, very lots of uh, low level information. But uh, in this case, something parses your code, that, that Ruby code, turns it into bytecode. And the Ruby interpreter will then use that bytecode and turn it into system calls. So very good. We, the Ruby interpreter starts setting a bunch of rules up that you, the programmer, can, can use. So moving down the stack, uh, on Heroku, we happen to be running a bunch of these VMs in uh, LXC containers. So this is relatively new technology, um, or certainly you know, rapidly maturing technology. But uh, this is a system in which, OK, you get a space to just exec a program. So pretty straightforward, but uh, there's, there's something special going on here. Uh, and then, of course, on Heroku, the, the real key, what makes us a you know, service is that we give you an API for this. So you making HTTP calls are able to start and stop these containers at will. And of course, you also you know, specify your code with other API calls. So this is what, you know, by building the system but putting it online, running it as a service, this is uh, what makes Heroku a platform. Uh, and so, of course, let's keep moving down the stack. The uh, LXC container, it's running in an operating system. Uh, we happen to use a lot of Ubuntu at Heroku, uh, you know, very popular Linux distribution these days. And this does a couple different things. Um, so, of course, Ubuntu makes a user space, makes a user land, um, like the actual library and files and binaries that are exposed to you and your VM to, to use and touch. So versions of libc, versions of libpq for your database. Uh, but on the execution front, uh, you know, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, this is something that's really maturing in the kernel. But uh, Ubuntu and the Linux kernel that it, that it gives you uh, gives you C groups, uh, control groups. So this is a very you know, explicit application of, of this metaphor. The kernel has control of what's going on. And it exposes some primitives for you to 
to modify this and put different processes in different groups. So this is really one of the key technologies at Heroku. We can take one of these LXC containers, put it in a group. The group uh, has namespace isolation. So you, your process, your container, can't see any of the other ones running on the server. It has resource utilization and resource containerization. So we give you some amount of memory, some amount of CPU shares, and the kernel imposes these limits for your application and for all the other ones running on the platform. So this is really an enabling technology in, in uh, Linux cloud applications today. Uh, OK, but let's go deeper. So on Heroku, we're building everything on Amazon. So it gets you know, even, even more interesting. So this Ubuntu server with its C groups is actually a VM running in Zen. And this layer is absolutely black magic. Like, I have no idea how this works on the low level. Um, I would guess most people don't. Um, the, you know, of course, we're very familiar with virtual machines at this point. Um, but how it actually works is, is uh, you know, very, very special knowledge. But, uh, you know, the hypervisor, it's, again, another literal uh, interpretation of this concept, that uh, there's something that can see everything, control everything, and, and um, run these virtual machines. Uh, and of course, similar to LXT containers, except this is now giving you a whole operating system, a virtual operating system to manage. Um, and of course, this hypervisor is running in yet another machine. Uh, and this one, you know, Amazon is absolutely a black box in, in a lot of ways, but there are things we know about it. They maintain their own Linux distribution, uh, Amazon Linux. It's based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And, uh, you know, this, you can imagine, is probably even more crazy than anything uh, most of us are doing with the kernel and the operating system. Uh, likely a custom kernel, likely custom Zen modules. Uh, but one of the important interfaces that it exposes here is this paravirtual API. Uh, this is something rather new on even Amazon's platform, exposing this to you and exposing this to the images that you run. But uh, as I mentioned, you know, virtual machines, those are very much black magic. And, and one part of that is how can we efficiently run a virtual machine where we're duplicating all the, this operating system running in another operating system? And uh, we've developed uh, this API where it's only half of it is like virtual emulated stuff. There's lots of control over letting system calls, letting execution happen on the main CPU with very little overhead. So this is a very uh, important and empowering part of uh, the virtualization uh, space here. And uh, so moving even farther down, we're finally on a CPU here. So we're focusing on the execution, gone up you know, all these different layers of stacks, and, and it's easy to forget, you know, there is a CPU here somewhere. The, uh, um, a very, very big one, likely. Um, you know, this is where, again, lots of black magic is encoded on how this actually works. But uh, this is what finally exposes instructions that the, the CPU, that uh, the software can, can do to actually interact with the hardware and control what's in and out of memory, what's in, on and off the network stack, and uh, how you manipulate this. So are we done? Uh, there's one more level, which is physics. The, here, you know, we're actually, we have this CPU, but it's actually this thing that's sitting here. It's a piece of matter. It's a crystal. It's um, the, you know, semiconductors and conductors and fiber optics. And, and this thing actually physically exists somewhere. It's in some data center. And it, uh, you know, we have rules that, that physics gives to us about um, time and, and space, and particularly power consumption is, you know, really important here, heating and cooling. The, and this is, again, really easy to forget, but this is incredibly important. Like, this is where things fail all the time. A power supply will, will blow out, and physically we can't run this unit anymore, or the air conditioner will fail, or there's a power storm, and, and so this is really important, and uh, precisely something that you know, again, it is easy to forget, and you probably don't want to actually manage this. Uh, the, these data centers get very complicated. So, all right, we did it. We uh, started with something easy and kind of descended, you know, down this lower level uh, stairs of madness and, and got down to, like, a, a, you know, actually knowing where our application is running. So, very good. 
so why all this? Um, you know, it's actually kind of, as I was writing this, it's like, yeah, this is great. Um, these are all the steps here, but why are we doing this? And the answer might be like, it's a terrible idea. This is insane. The, there's too many levels of, of complexity here. Um, there, there's all these trade-offs. And this is something that explicitly comes out of this kernel and user space uh, paradigm, that the kernel imposes trade-offs, it imposes limits that you can do. And it hides complexity behind these different layers. So, you know, this entire stack uh, if, is insanely complicated, and really it's impossible to imagine, like, once this stuff is all running, like, how it actually is performing on that CPU, all the VMs, all the containers, all our code. And uh, there's performance trade-offs. Uh, likewise, there's huge customization trade-offs. The, you know, Heroku has picked a very opinionated stack, and if, and if you aren't comfortable with the Ubuntu user space that we give you, uh, this platform's not for you. Uh, likewise, you know, Amazon has gotten increasingly more flexible in this, but, you know, there was a time when you couldn't run whatever kernel you wanted to do, only certain operating systems were, were allowed. And uh, finally, probably one of the most hard things about this is visibility. The kernel does black box all this stuff, and you can't see into it. The, uh, you don't know what it's doing. Uh, you, you certainly know what you are able to do on it, but you can't always look behind the curtain. And this can be really frustrating as an application developer or as somebody using Amazon. Um, so that, the, the visibility of the cloud is, is a whole different concept that uh, I think you know, definitely explores looking into. Um, but hopefully there are reasons why this makes sense. And, and there certainly are plenty. Uh, it is notable that this stuff is working. We're, being, we're able to operate software at a scale never seen before. We're able to do it a lot easier than ever before. And, and so there is something here. Uh, so one huge one is operational efficiency. If your application required its own single CPU and network and, and um, you know, power, you can imagine that that would be incredibly difficult to operate. So a huge part of virtualization technology, containerization technology, is to increase the efficiency of, of a single kind of generic unit, a generic computing unit. And uh, we can abstract that, make it very general, and operate many of these at the same time. So that's very important. Uh, likewise, security. Again, as the kernel is controlling what the user space can and can't do, it bakes in a lot of security in these systems. So in some ways, this is what you can do and you can't do to another user of the system, or it's what you can't do to the, the space behind the system. But in a lot of cases, it's also what you can't do to yourself, which is very nice. And um, another very important reason is this expressiveness. The, hopefully, with each layer of abstraction, you get easier and easier user space tools to operate with. If uh, you know, the Linux operating system didn't give you this really nice shell where you can type commands in, it would you know, it'd be the same computer, the same operating system, but the, it would be much, much harder to use. And so these subsequent layers of, of abstraction you know, get us back to where you can just express your idea, express your API in very elegant Ruby code or very elegant JavaScript code and get all these features for free. And, and so really, this is all kind of sums up to leverage. The, these, this pyramid of, of all these systems enables you, empowers you to leverage everything that's ever been you know, added and thought about and put in these stacks. So you as an application developer, you're able to leverage like, the infinite human knowledge that's in the Linux operating system, which you know, is probably beyond most of us. You're able to leverage the care and, and dedication that Amazon gives to running a data center everything that must go into capacity planning and, and power and, and CPU and, and that stuff is very hard. And uh, then, of course, you, know, you get leverage of all the Heroku operations, what we do for you, the uh, engineers that are on call 24-7 for keeping your application up. So this is really why we do this. And so the question is, you know, where, where do we go from here? What is the future of... of user space of this paradigm of, of cloud computing in general. And uh, so one thing I hope we can do is reduce complexity. The, I think you'll, you'll, if you look at the space, there's plenty of people that do recognize like, okay, some of these tools are way too complicated. Can we cut layers out of here? You know, people like all the time are like, well, I don't actually want to run on Amazon. 
I would love to run on bare metal, but I do need that API. Um, providers that offer that are very much helping out the uh, cloud ecosystem. Uh, likewise, we can add more power. Just what can you actually do with this? The, how much resources are there? What types of servers and services are there? And, and you know, now in, in a user space, you can use a distributed data store that is silently handling high availability and transactional qualities without you ever thinking about it. It's incredibly powerful tools. Uh, Heroku, you know, we're very uh, sure that an uh, important part is to make these APIs really elegant. Uh, something that I think Amazon does a bad job at. They give you power, but it's not easy. And Heroku has gotten a lot of, a lot of uh, leverage out of making these APIs way more elegant. And um, the a way we do this is by self-hosting. All these things can roll up again into uh, a, a strategy for building and operating and using these services, which is if you want to try to cut layers out, if you want to try to make things easier, you have to use these spaces all the time. So it's something, again, at Heroku, take very seriously. All the time, like any time we can, we try to cut out infrastructure, cut out things from the, from the kernel of our, of our service, and self-host it in our own user space. And this is a really important technique, because it really points out what is missing. Like, those, those boundaries are hard. We can peer behind it as you know, a layer up on the stack, but um, the more we use our own services, the better we understand, wait, this isn't right yet, it doesn't have enough power, it's, it's not easy enough, let's tweak the kernels and, and move stuff in and out. Uh, likewise, I see this happening a lot on, again, the containerization space, where things are kind of going in and out of, of the kernel space, like put a lot of complexity there, but, but um, now that empowers you to run services in a new way. So uh, this is a very important strategy for, for Heroku, and and frankly, for all of us. So this is a space that you can participate in, too. Anytime you put an API up online, you're creating a space for users to, to do these things, to do something that's hopefully easier and more powerful than ever before. So it's uh, something that we're all in together to, to improve this. So thank you. That's uh, my